Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Josie and I'm so excited to be back with you for our final week of our series called In the Beginning. In this series, we are learning about some of the key stories from the beginning of the Bible. But before we jump into today's Bible story, let's remember who God is from one of our favorite Bible verses. Isaiah 40, 28 says, Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. That's so true. God is that amazing. Let's sing it out and let's celebrate God together. That was great. I don't know about you, but that song is on repeat in my head. I wonder if that will help me for what's next. Now it's time for our DJ Robo Sloth memory verse quiz. In a world where sloths can dance, one sloth rose above them all to become DJ Robo Sloth. Now it's time to put our knowledge to the test. Shout out the right answer if you know it, and let's play. In a world where sloths can dance, one sloth rose above them all to become DJ Robo Sloth. Hold on to your headphones, people. The time of the sloth has come. That time is right now. Lightning reflexes, amazing dance moves, and the ability to drop a beat so hard, it hurts. DJ Robo Sloth. in the blank. No one can blank the depths of his blank. Calculate grace. Measure understanding. See knowledge. Oh. That's right. 
No one can measure the depth of his understanding. Next question. Which word doesn't belong? He sometimes grows weak or weary. Sometimes grows weak. That's right, sometimes doesn't belong. He never grows weak or weary. Next question. What is the verse reference? Isaiah 418? Isaiah 4018? Isaiah 4028? That's right, the first reference is Isaiah 40, 28. Great job. And remember, there ain't no party without DJ RoboSaw. Until next time, keep spinning. Yeah! Come on! That was so fun. Having the song stuck in my head made that quiz super easy. And that's pretty cool because I'll remember this verse about God and know that there is nothing too hard for God because He is God. That's pretty encouraging in times when things are tough or when we're tired or overwhelmed. God loves us and He always will and always will help us. That reminds me of today's Bible story. It's about Noah and the flood. As you watch, think about how Noah put his trust in God even when it was hard. You ready? Let's watch. Stories of the Bible. Noah and the flood. This is Noah. Hey. Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah. But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were doing evil things and hurting each other. This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told Noah to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Colors, bird, moss, okay, all here. Noah did just that, and then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth, but Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent a wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent a dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. So the dove returned to the boat. Oh, hello again. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time, it came back with an olive leaf. Oh, good girl. So Noah knew that the floodwaters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again, and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was drying. He waited two more months, and at last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay! 
So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. See ya! Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Wow, I can't even imagine what it must have been like when that flood came. And what was it like to be on that ark for so long? Noah and his family had it to completely trust God through it all. The Bible tells us that we should put our trust in God. He is the creator of the universe and our heavenly father. He loves us more than we could ever imagine. Let's find out more about how we can trust God like Noah by watching a new episode of Reptile Hunter. We will follow Greg and his cameraman Dan all over the world in their search for reptiles that are in need of help. Let's check it out and see what he has to say. Hey, how's it going? Greg here, professionally trained, officially certified, and FDA approved reptile hunter. Now, we go on the search for reptiles that are in danger. We bring them back to safety in our reptile reserve. So, come along with me and my cameraman Dan as we go on the hunt for reptiles. Reptile Hunter, saving reptiles since 2019. Hey Reptile Hunters, Greg here in Palmetto, Florida. And today we're on the search for an American alligator. He brings us all the way out to a golf course. You never believe it. Why would an alligator come to a golf course? Let me tell you, alligators love the cool, moist climates like this with lakes and ponds and grass. So here's the deal. <laughs> I got some grass in my mouth, Dan. Now, before we go hunting for the alligator, we gotta learn a little bit about these guys. They are beautiful, powerful creatures with a super strong bite. Boom! 2200 PSI, which is pounds per square inch. That's double the bite strength of a lion. You do not want to get bit by one of these guys. And here's the deal too. They love hanging out by the water because they can hold their breath for up to five hours. I can't do that. Can you? No way. They can slow their heart rate down to two to three beats per minute. These guys are wild, wild creatures. But we got to find one of these guys and return him back to his natural habitat so he's not hanging around here bugging all the golfers. But I got no trusty technology today. We're just going to play a good old fashion round of golf, Dan, what do you say? So, let's go find this gator. <laughs> Did you see that, Dan? I think that's the farthest ball I've ever hit. It... We got a gator, Dan. This is the one we've been looking for. Oh, it's a beauty. It's definitely an adolescent alligator. So, Dan, the alligator's on the move, Dan. He's coming for you. <gasps> oh, Dan. Here we go. We're gonna have to get him back to the reserve. I got you, buddy. I got you. I got you. All right. All right, Dan. All right. So, we got the alligator. We gotta get him off the golf course, back into the reserve. We got you, buddy. Don't you worry. Dan, get my clubs. All right, guys, we made it all the way back from Palmetto, Florida, and we're here at the Reptile Reserve. Now, we're here with our friend TikTok. And just like we suspected, he is an American alligator. And man, is he awesome. Now, we talked to some of the local golfers there. We just need to figure out a way for him to stay off the green and in some of the lakes with the rest of his friends. So we're gonna bring him back to Florida. But in the meantime, we have his mouth taped shut so he's not biting anyone. But you know me, I'm not afraid of animals. And I'm not afraid of reptiles. Which reminds me, my favorite story in the Bible is Noah's Ark, which we've talked about before, where all those animals came to hang out on that one ship. So we're gonna go to my field notes and get some more info on that. But for now, I'm gonna bring TikTok back. I'll be back. Come on, Dan. All right, so TikTok's on a plane and he's heading back to Florida. But like I was saying, this reminds me of Noah's Ark. Now, 
It's one of my very favorites, and you know this because I love animals. I love it too because it teaches us about trusting God. Noah had to trust God. The entire time he was building the ark, his neighbors mocked him and questioned everything that he was doing. It was a pretty dramatic thing that God was asking of him. I mean, to build a gigantic boat and fill it with animals? There were probably some times where Noah had doubts of his own, but those doubts didn't stop him from doing what he was supposed to do because he ultimately chose to place his trust in God. But here's the thing, Noah had to keep on trusting God when the flood came. His whole family was on the ship with him and all the animals. It must have been pretty scary, but he kept on believing that God would protect them. And when the rain stopped, he had to wait patiently for the dove to return with a sign that they could return to dry land. And when they were finally able to leave the ark, he had to keep on trusting that God would provide for them in this new world. Sometimes God will ask us to do specific things that take us out of our comfort zone. Like when we were hanging out with TikTok earlier, we had a piece of tape around his mouth because we couldn't trust if he would bite us or not. The tape could fail and break and I could get hurt. But the awesome thing to know is, is that if we put our trust in God, he will never fail us. Sometimes God will ask us to trust him in situations that are difficult, but trust in God is a lifelong thing. We have to trust in him day in and day out. And sometimes that'll be easy and other times it'll be hard. But one way or the other, God will be right there with us no matter what. Dan, it looks like another reptile needs our help. But hey, before I go, remember, protect nature, hunt for the truth, and always trust in God. Hey, I'm Greg, and we'll see you reptile hunters out there. Let's go, Dan. Reptile Hunter, saving reptiles since 2019. Greg is the best. I just love what he said about how Noah had to keep trusting God. It wasn't just a one-time thing. He really had to choose it every day, even when things were hard. And we can choose to trust God like this too. We can choose every day to remember God's love for us and choose to follow God. We can trust God and remember that He will keep all His promises. Well friends, I'm so glad you joined me for church today in this series called In the Beginning. I'm praying that if you face some things this week that are tough, you will remember Noah and know that you can trust God. God loves you so much today and always. And don't forget, there are more activities for you online at saddlebackkids.com. Check it out, and I'll see you right back here next week. Bye, everyone.